Hello ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the news live and welcome to this English news edition coming up in the next 20 minutes. R&D leader Ahmed Ouyahia calls on all Algerians to overlook what he called as meaningless current opposition declarations against the government asserting that Algeria is ready to overcome the economic crisis. Plus, Pilgrimage season 2016 online subscriptions kicked off this morning and for the first time ever via the Ministry of the Interior and Local Collectivities website. And later on in our news program, a new wave of ISIL suicide attacks, sniper fire and roadside bombs targeting Iraq forces and the militia allies killed more than 30 fighters today Thursday in and around the city of Ramadi. Hello there again and thanks for joining us. First in our top stories and during his visit to the Laghouat province, southern Algeria, Prime Minister Abdel Malik Salal affirmed that the fall of oil prices will not influence Algeria's economy since oil will be replaced by other sources of energy. Siam Tadou reports. During his working visit to Laghouat province, southern Algeria, Prime Minister Abdel Malik Salal reassured the Algerians that the fluctuating of oil prices will not affect our economy since oil will be replaced by other sources of renewable energy. Abdel Malik Salal stated that Algeria's notably national company Sona Truck will rely on a diversified economy. <laughs> I'm asking you as the head of state to ignore all the speculations against an attract giant company because this company is the pillar of our country's economy. We do need energy to diversify our economy. We will launch new industries such as phosphate production. Our economy must focus on renewable energy. We must bring together all our efforts to improve slightly our economy by relying on other sources of energy within the year 2017. Furthermore, Prime Minister Abdel Malik Saleh encouraged all engineers from different petrochemical industries to boost oil and gas national production as they are all of high demand from the Algerian industries. We decided with our national CEOs industries to increase oil and gas production because it receives a lot of demand on the national and international industrial markets. The demand rises year after year. Mr. Salel announced that several industrial projects will be embarked on by the year 2017. The letter affirmed that some southern population residents will benefit from gas soon. But is it so easy to rely on other sources of energy? How much will it cost, knowing that Algeria is facing a quite alarming economic crisis? The Interim Secretary General of the National Democratic Rally, or RND Ahmed Ouyahia, presided a press conference at the National Council's regular session where he called all Algerians to overlook what he quoted as meaningless current opposition declarations against the government asserting that Algeria is ready to overcome the economic crisis. Siam Zadou again. The Interim Secretary General of the National Democratic Rally, or R&D, Ahmed Ouyahia, held a press conference at the National Council's regular session where he called the whole Algerian population to ignore all what he named as absurd current opposition declarations against the government, affirming that Algeria is determined to overcome the economic crisis. Some people speculate that oil prices continue to drop more and more and stir controversy in the political scene. If the population party is able to solve social problems, it would be wonderful. Mr. Ouyahia went on stating to the Algerians that the results of the partial renewal of Senate membership have shocked some opponents who aim only to create tensions nationwide. The letter affirmed that the $800 billion spent during these past 15 years was exploited in favor of development projects. 
We leaders of National Democratic Rally care about the future of our national economy. As members of the political scene, we do shoulder our responsibility towards our population. We have to announce that the economic crisis is alarming. But at the same time, this crisis mustn't plunge us into pessimism. We must bring together all our efforts to overcome this crisis. Aren't the interim secretary general Ahmed Ouyahia points the finger at the opposition body, which is threatening the government's transparency and sovereignty, refusing its participation in the consultations by referring to the compatibility of the new constitution. In other national news, bee breeders and honey producers have asked the Ministry of Agriculture, Rural Development and Fisheries for more support to raise the quality of locally produced honey during the activities Beekeepers Federation of the Mediterranean Countries hosted by Algeria. Kenin Fazakri. Opening broad prospects for investors in bee breeding and honey production with all its kind as part of agricultural activities could importantly increase national production in this field and get the country significant profitability. Nevertheless, this sector is still undergoing many hurdles and bureaucratic issues. We have some administrative obstacles. There are a lot of difficulties. For example, to get a piece of land, we had to wait for a long period of time. We kept submitting files. And now there is no support or any other form of subsidies. To be a honey producer isn't an easy task. The government needs to accompany them so as to have an effective production. We're working with scarce means. Yet the government needs to provide us with special spaces for honey production, for example. We're trying to help farmers sell their honey, which is of a very good quality. And since boosting such activities requires collaboration between countries which specialize in such production, a special federation of honey production was created for such collaboration between some Mediterranean countries. It's not just a problem of quality or problem of market, but a problem of economic understanding in the Mediterranean region. We want this profession to be strong, and this is what we need to understand now. We need to find ways to draw the beekeepers and the ministry closer, in addition to the provision of means and ways to better the production and contribute in the country's economy. The minister is very ambitious toward this, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Support, subsidies, accompanying and easing the administrative procedures for beekeepers were all the main demands in order to boost this important economic and agricultural activity in Algeria. Pilgrimage season 2016 online subscriptions kicked off this morning and for the first time ever via the Ministry of the Interior and Local Collectivities website. While maintaining the classic registration via the allocated city halls, the process will continue until February the 25th, while the draw will be conducted on Saturday, March the 5th. Hints in the the Ministry of Interior and Local Collectivities and as a first in order to facilitate the process for subscribers for pilgrimage season 2016 has provided online subscription services through its website to be operational 24-7, putting February 25th as a deadline. Concerning pilgrimage season 2016, the administration is seeking to adopt a new regularization concerning online subscription through the Ministry of Interior's website, saving citizens the trouble of commuting to the city hall. Despite the modernization of online subscription services, registration via City Hall is still open to the public. The classic paperwork registration, however, is kept operational too, much to the appreciation of the elderly. In case citizens didn't possess internet services, they can still head to the nearest city hall. The application form is handed to the citizen and we fill them, then introduce data to the website. I don't have internet in my house and I'm not eligible for it, so I came to the city hall. I appreciate this initiative. Some people are illiterate, others are too old. 
the digitization of pilgrimage season 2016 subscriptions, along with electronic draw, are all new initiatives the Ministry of Religious Affairs is betting on to regulate the process that has long been shaky and linked to failure. Question remains, will technological ways redeem what Hatch Office failed to achieve in the previous years? Moving on to world developments, Sudan's President Omar Hassan al-Bashir ordered the opening of his country's border with South Sudan for the first time since the South session in 2011, paving the way for better economic links between the two nations. The border was closed in 2011 when re relations worsened after the South split it following a long civil war, taking with it three quarters of the country's or estimated at five billion barrels of proven reserves, according to the U.S., Energy Information Administration. The British government said today Thursday that British or Britain will take in an unspecified number of migrant children who have been separated from their parents by conflicts in Syria and other countries. Officials will work with UN Refugee Agency to identify youngsters who will be eligible to take up residence in Britain. Prime Minister David Cameron announced in September that 20,000 refugees from camps on Syria's borders would be brought in by 2020, more than 1,000 half of them children have been arrived so far. The Swedish Interior Ministry said today Thursday that up to 80,000 refugees who arrived in Sweden last year will be expelled from the country over the next few years. Both Germany and Sweden were the top destinations for asylum seekers in Europe last year, with Sweden receiving one of the highest amounts of refugees per capita in the European Union. A new wave of ISIL suicide attacks, sniper fire and roadside bombs targeting Iraqi forces and their militia allies killed more than 30 fighters on Thursday in and around the city of Ramadi. The heavy fighting comes after more than 50 Iraqi soldiers and pro-government tribal fighters were killed earlier in the week during attacks by the so-called Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant group near the city, which lies just 100 kilometers west of Baghdad. The Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani, is currently visiting several European countries to sign business deals with billions of dollars as Iran comes back in from the diplomatic cold after years of economic sanctions. Iran's president, Hassan Rouhani, has hailed a new chapter in French-Iranian relations during his visit to Paris to discuss trade ties. Let's follow this report by Karim Fazakri. Iran's president continues his coming in from the cold mini European tour, doing deals with the French to add to the 17 billion euros worth of deals he signed with the Italians earlier this week. Included is an order for 100 Airbus passenger jets and car making and train agreements with Peugeot and the state owned SNCF. Oil firm Total also announced deals with Iran. Iran is re-establishing all its commercial activities previously restricted by the sanctions in the coming years. President Hassan Rouhani is meeting with every echelon of French state power and is guest of honor at a meeting for the Iran-France Business Forum organized by the Employers Federation. The Iranian president was received at a welcome ceremony on Thursday at the Invalids Monument in Paris. Mr. Rouhani reasoned that the time was ripe for both countries to enhance their relations. Diplomacy at the negotiating table can be quite effective, and it can, through logic and prudence, resolve problems. For his part, French Prime Minister Manuel Valls said the two countries were being reunited. Mr. Rouhani's Europe tour comes after the lifting of international sanctions over Iran's nuclear program. Mr. Rouhani's five-day visit to Italy and France is the first by an Iranian president in nearly two decades. We're back to Algeria now. Uh, Tunisia and Algeria sealed a place in the Africa Cup of Nations semis at the expense of Cameroon and DR Congo, respectively, yesterday, Wednesday. The Carthage Eagles uh, eased past Cameroon 24-20 to in the quarters, claiming their sixth successive win in the continental tournament. Defending champions Algeria beat DR Congo 34-25 to to set up a nation African derby against Tunisia 
in the semis. The nation's cup winner will reach the Summer Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, while the top three will qualify for next year's World Championship in France. And finally, the National Symphonic Orchestra, headed by maestro Ukrainian Vladimir Shaiko and expatriate Algerian-Russian pianist Louisa, performed a variety of world's classic music, much to the delight of the Algerian public, who attended in large numbers at Mahyadin Bashtarzi Theatre Hall in Algiers Wednesday night. Hence, Minavas. In front of a numerous crowd who came to appreciate the genius of the greatest names of universal classic music, where sweet melodies and beautiful voice marvels were combined. For every time classic music is played in Algeria, the spirit of world music awakens, and this time was from Mahidin Bashtarzi Theatre Hall. <laughs> This was a blast in the presence of our loyal audience who contributed widely in the success of this edition. Today we've witnessed a major event with the National Symphonic Orchestra accompanied by our guest, Vladimir Shaiko, the Ukrainian maestro along with other members of the Ukrainian orchestra. A dazzling performance was given by Algerian concert pianists and the exceptional participation of Ukrainian voices marked the evening, further showcasing the two countries' cultural cohesion. I'm thrilled of coming here. It's a chance to get introduced to the Algerian classic music as well as the cultural exchange between the two countries. Also, an opportunity to meet the Algerian audience. I'm really amazed by the audience present in the hall, also thrilled of singing here on this stage. The cultural exchange is what nourishes the music. A high quality performance generated a long standing ovation from the public. The author, the Algerian Russian Louisa Hamadi in piano, well inspired and well-prepared, valued her technical qualities in a world-class execution, mixing mastery and dexterity, tenderness and subtlety. When the chance comes, I come to play the piano with the National Symphonic Orchestra. Classical pieces engulfing the soul, flying the audience around the globe. No matter how language is deferred, how distance is varied. Classic music combines all cultures. Before we wrap up, these are our main top stories. RND leader Ahmed Ouyahia calls all Algerians to overlook all what he called as meaningless current opposition declarations against the government, asserting that Algeria is ready to, over to overcome the economic crisis. Pilgrimage season 2016 online subscriptions kicked off this morning and for the first time ever via the Ministry of the Interior and Local Collectivities website. And a new wave of ISIL suicide attacks, sniper fire and roadside bombs targeting Iraqi forces and their militia allies killed more than 30 fighters today Thursday in and around the city of Ramadi. The end of our English News Edition brought to you live from Zay News Channel. For further details, visit our website. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.